Hey y'all, Tim Risto here, host of the Creative Christians Podcast, back with you again for another episode of Tim Talks Christian Rock. Today I wanted to kind of share with you about some unique albums, vinyl and CDs, that I have in my collection throughout Christian Rock, Christian music history, primarily Christian Rock, but I do have some different uh, genres of music in here as well. Now, these are not necessarily, you know, super rare albums. Some of them may be. Some may have been crowdfunded, and now they're not available anymore. I'm sure you can find them, but probably at a higher price and things like that on eBay or Discogs. But these are primarily just kind of unique. Unique either in, you know, their packaging. They may be colored vinyl or, like I said, a crowdfunded thing that's not easy to find anymore. Um, some CDs that have gone out of print that have not been remastered or re-released or were never released on vinyl, things like that. They may be unique in their standing in terms of the album and Christian music history, or they may just be, in some cases, rare and harder to find. Um, Most of these, though, I think you can find in some way, shape, or form. A few of them may be just harder to locate because they're out of print. And some of these have autographs on them, so they're unique in that regard. Maybe there are some things in here that you've got that you really like. Maybe there's some things here that you've never heard of that will pique your interest in the music and uh, the uniqueness of the albums themselves as they relate to Christian music history. First up, from 1991-92 is At the Foot of the Cross. This was originally a CD release, and I believe a cassette release as well, was not released on vinyl. And this is really more of a worshipful kind of music sound, kind of ethereal, very peaceful for the most part, although there are some upbeat songs on here, but it's a very kind of meditative, worshipful musical experience. This was produced by Steve Hindelong, Derry Doherty, and Greg Flesh. And and Hindelong and Doherty are from the choir, the band The Choir, which I love. They're a fantastic band. They produced it with a bunch of other artists uh, uh, playing on it and singing on it. This is volume one, Clouds, Rain, and Fire. They did do a volume two, I believe a few years later or several years later, and it was it was good. It was not as good as this one. This one just hit the mark right in terms of the music, the style, the mood, the artist playing on it. This is just a special, special album. I listened to this a lot back in the 90s. Had this CD and loved it. Loved it a lot. It's just got a great tone. It's got a little bit of a choir vibe to it, obviously, with the choir producers on it. Well, a few years ago, they remastered it and then finally put it out, uh, did a crowdfunding, and put it out on vinyl, and I was able to get a copy of it. It's it's similar in terms of the artwork and things, but they did change things a little bit, and it's really a pretty cool addition. There's uh, Doherty and Hindelong there on the back. This even came autographed if you bought through the crowdfunding campaign, and this came out in 2022. It's a really nice vinyl edition and it sounds really good on vinyl. Let me open it up. It is a gatefold release so it's got some cool uh, album art ties in with the angel theme, statue of the angel theme there and then uh, lyrics in here as well. It's a single disc release, lyrics in there as well and it's really a beautifully done edition. It's kind of got this I don't know, brownish, reddish uh, smoke kind of vinyl. Very, very beautiful. And it's very sturdy. I think it must be 180 gram vinyl, if I remember correctly. Very, very nice addition. And the music on this is just so good. If, there, if there's type of worship music that I really enjoy, especially for kind of my own personal meditation or before or after doing devotions, this album really exemplifies it for me. Um, It starts out with this great little prelude called Clouds Rain Fire, moves into another great song called Round About You. One of my favorite songs on this is When the Sun Fades, which is very choir-like, 
Uh, it's a little more upbeat song, but it's it's really cool. A beautiful Scandalous Night on here. Um, oh, this has My Redeemer Lives, which was sung by Mark Hurd. Really, really cool version of that. The, the whole album is just a great experience from beginning to end. Highly, highly recommend. I don't know if there's any copies of this still available. You know, the crowdfunding campaign's long over, but maybe on the choir's site or this was through Galaxy Music. It does list the choir website on the back here, uh, thechoir.net. You can check and see if they still have any vinyl left over from the crowdfunding campaign. Hey, y'all, just as a quick aside, I did go over to the choir website at choir.net, went to the store, to the catalog, and found there is both CD and vinyl copies still available. Here's the regular remastered vinyl for about 30 bucks. They also still have the autographed version of the vinyl, plus a free digital download of commentary for $35. So there are still copies available, and it is a wonderful album worth checking out for sure. I have seen from time to time on eBay, you know, finding CD copies of the original CD. They did remaster it for CD, too, as part of the crowdfunding campaign. I just chose to go with the vinyl, as I already had this original CD copy, and I'm fine with that. But it's really a very, very good album. And it's just unique, again, because... It was this effort to really create this very kind of worshipful album with all these artists. Phil Kagi's on there. Like I said, Mark Hurd. You've got these guys from the choir. number of different really good artists. And it's just, there's something special about the music on this album. It's just very good. And the lyrics are really good. It just puts you in that worshipful mood. I can't think of how else to describe it. It's really good. Um, highly encourage you to seek it out. You can check out the second volume, too. They didn't do a crowdfunding one on that. I'm not sure if they will. It was not as popular or as well-received as the first one, but um, it is. it does have some good tracks on it, just not as wholly successful as an album, I think, as this first one was. All right, so let's get started on looking at some Christian rock, because i got a bunch of Christian rock here to look at. First up is Barnabas. This is the CD release of their first two albums, Hear the Light and Find Your Heart a Home. This was on Millennium 8 Records, where they combined the first two albums on this CD. Millennium 8 Records, I believe, is kind of the precursor to Girder or Boone's Overstock, Retroactive. I know there's two brothers that run most of those companies, record companies, distribution centers, whatever you want to call them. And this, I believe, was an early version of one of theirs or both of theirs companies. And so there's a lot of old Christian rock that's been re-released again since these came out. But these were kind of the early, early releases. And in some cases, they had extra tracks, you know, demo tracks, uh, special packaging, things like that, unique releases. So even though there's been, and in the case of Barnabas, this is true, both of these albums have been re-released as individual releases with expanded, um, at least packaging. I know they have booklets in them. They've been re-released, but these are still kind of unique in terms of the packaging. The, this one here was a limited edition reissue. This is number 863 of what I assume probably was a thousand. So it's, it's unique in that regard. It's also unique in that the first album here, Hear the Light, originally had 10 tracks. Here it's got 11. An 11th one includes Nicodemus as track 11, which in the note here says previously unreleased 45 RPM. Uh, so I believe that was the flip side of a 45 record that probably is very, very difficult to find. It says previously unreleased, I think previously unreleased on CD, but I believe there was a 45 of that, probably quite a collector's item. If I could find that 45, I wouldn't mind adding that to my record collection. But it's a unique release. These have, again, probably been remastered better than perhaps this edition since, but... This sounds good to my ears, and I love having both, you know, the first two albums both on a single CD release. 
So it's kind of cool. Packaging is is a little different. It doesn't have a booklet as much as it has a fold-out with uh, the lyrics on it and a band photo there and then all sorts of kind of cool photos here as well. So it's it's unique. It's different. I appreciate that when they've re-released stuff, they've made it different from what they've done before. There's the CD disc art there. The tray has a photo of the band there. So it's kind of unique. You know, it's something I found on eBay, I believe, after Girder had re-released these albums, remastered and redone them. And then people usually buy those, and then they jettison their old collection. So it's a great time to look for some of these Millennium 8 and other collectibles on eBay. So I didn't go and buy the first two albums from Girder on the individual releases because I was kind of fine with this. I did get their other three albums on CD releases. But unique, unique CD. There's also another Barnabas one here called Artifacts and Relics. This is usually, I've found this very inexpensive, like five bucks. I think even Girder sells it for five bucks. But this is another Millennium 8 album. It's just got some kind of odd tracks, some demo tracks from Barnabas, some stuff uh, by Nancy Jo Mann. I think it's maybe some of her solo type stuff, but some of these were, I think All Alone was a Barnabas song. And then the Bethlehem White Sox is a band, which I think was precursor to Barnabas. Don't remember the whole story. I think it explains it here in, in uh, the little insert. But it's unique. It's not something I'd necessarily recommend. The audio quality is pretty bad. There's demo tracks. Some of it was recorded on cassette. It does have three Barnabas tunes, uh, Conflict of Desire, Directory Assistance, and Southern Woman. Not necessarily things, you know, your casual Barnabas fan is going to look for. But for the really hardcore Barnabas collectors, it's kind of unique to have, and it's very inexpensive to find. I've seen it on both eBay, Discogs, and Girder for 5 or 6 bucks, So it's not expensive, but not something I'm going to listen to real often either. So, you know, your mileage may vary. Next up, another slightly unique one is this Baron Cross CD, Birth Pangs. This was their 30th anniversary live at Elements of Rock. Switzerland. Baron Cross kind of reunion concert that they did and recorded it. They did a video recording, they did an audio recording, of course, and then released this double CD set. This was back in 2014. And this had the original band members. It got a really good set list. It's really actually a very good concert. The audio recording, I don't know, it feels a little tinny to me at times, but overall it's it's good. There's two CDs, like I said, in the tray, some packaging and artwork. There's a little booklet with it. Um, technically, I guess you would say this was uh, with photos here. Michael Lee, uh, now Michael Drive. Uh, photos uh, in here throughout. I don't know if they have lyrics. I don't think they have the lyrics. Track list by disc there. This is actually a really good release. I enjoy it. It's good performance by them. I was able to also buy the videos of the concert that they recorded. At the time I bought this and the videos through their Baron Cross website and was able to download the videos. So you don't get, I don't think there's a DVD of any kind available or Blu-ray. You just had to download the videos. So it's a little hard to keep track of. Like I don't even know where they are on my hard drive right now. So I tend not to watch them like I would if I could pull a Blu-ray off the shelf and plug it in and watch it. But um, it is easy in that you get access to them immediately after you purchase. You download them, and you can start watching. But it's a good concert. I'm sure it's available on YouTube somewhere. Probably somebody's uploaded it. Maybe Baron Cross themselves have. But it's a good concert, good performance. It's neat to see the band in action. And I think, really, this was their last release. If you think about 30th, 30th anniversary, and this was 2014, you know, they haven't really done anything since. So this was their reunion concert, basically, probably put a capper on that, I know most of them have gone on to other things. Michael, Michael Drive, I think is part of Gale Force now. I don't know what. Um, oh, Jim Laverty is part of Triton, I believe, and then Ray Paris. Not sure what he's doing, but uh, anyway, good album and well worth checking out if you haven't heard it, haven't seen it. It's actually really good. I think this is just generic cover art. I've seen this on a number of releases. I think Sweet Comfort Band had a reunion, and it was the same 
you know, probably iStock photo image of some sort. So it's nothing special as far as that goes, but uh, it's a good good band performance. Check it out. Next up from Blood Good comes the CD of their, for what was for a while, their last studio album, All Stand Together. This was also a 90s album, 1991, put out by Broken Records. And this is probably, uh, I'm going to say their least known album. Uh, it, for me, it's the least listened to album at this point. It's a good one. It sounds like Blood Good. It's just a little more maybe popish sounding, maybe not quite as hard, moving a little more into you know some 90s vibes, a little more dated sounding than most of their other stuff. When they came back in 2013, was it, with Dangerously Close, and they had Oz Fox, and, you know, they kind of revamped. They'd taken a long break after this one. Um, that album was much more in keeping with their, the traditional kind of blood good style that everybody recognized from uh, the first four albums in particular. Uh, this one just gravitated a little bit away from that. But it's still good. There's nothing wrong with it. There's stuff I really like. Uh, opening track SOS sounds like just traditional blood good. There's the CD, lyrics, sheet. So what's unique about this is it was their last release up until Dangerously Close before they took a super long break. And it's never been released on vinyl. So the only way to get it is this CD. And it's kind of a hard to find CD. You can find it. Um, it may cost a little more because it is out of print and rare and they haven't it hasn't been remastered. It hasn't been re-released as yet. So it's unique in that regard. It's kind of that lone standout in the, in the Blood Good discography that just hasn't gotten the uh, great you know, remastered treatment yet. However, I did see on a recent Facebook Christian music site, Les Carlson, the lead singer of Blood Good, posted about this album and started to get some feedback and comments from people. And somebody asked, would love to have this, you know, or commented, would love to have this on vinyl. And Les Carlson did reply and say uh, something to the effect of, you know, we're talking about it or we're looking into it, something like that. So I think being kind of the lone standout in their discography that has not been re-released, remastered, we may see this happen perhaps next year, 2024. So we'll see. Um, and I don't know, you know, if they have access to the original masters whether they could do kind of a remix of it you know bring it up from not being so dated sounding don't know i know most of these christian artists when you know when they were on these christian labels and then they got bought out by some secular record companies masters original masters multi-tracks disappeared you know don't know where they are uh, I've heard online a lot of people talk about how many original masters were just destroyed by record companies, secular record companies, thinking there was no future in re-releasing this stuff or hanging on to this stuff. So who knows if there are any original masters of this in existence and whether they could do kind of a uh, really thorough remastering. In most cases, that doesn't seem to be the case. But look forward to that. Hopefully we'll see All Stand Together in a new release maybe in 2024 we'll see next up let's take a look at bride i've got this special limited edition release of bride again one of those millennium eight record releases this is of show no mercy limited edition series this one cd release is number 207 again i would assume this was probably a a thousand copy release might have even been 500 but probably a thousand this is unique in the release but also in that it's autographed by dale and troy uh, thompson from bride dale was the vocalist of course and troy the guitarist so it's unique in that i've seen a number of these around i don't know that this is uh, super hard to find or super rare or super collectible but it is unique it does have seven uh, special bonus tracks on here one of them's a demo so you know it's got the, the original 10 tracks plus i can fly now welcome what must i do butterfly missing children fright look at me now and then a demo of no matter the price so not sure if those 
particular tracks have been re-released or released on other CD editions. It's quite possible. Maybe some have. Don't know if all of them have. At least some of these may only appear on this edition. So again, kind of unique in that regard. Another release from the band Bride is Fistful of Bees. This is unique and kind of rare, too. This is their 2001 album, described as a little bit more kind of rap rock core or rap metal core something to that effect i think is how it's most often been described it's still actually a really good album i listened to this not too long ago and while it's not my favorite bride album it is actually pretty cool it it doesn't deserve the 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 hard kind of rap description that gets applied to it oftentimes there's actually some really good hard music on here so it's unique and different but it's very difficult to find at a good price although occasionally i've seen one pop up on ebay ebay for you know 20 25 bucks still kind of a little pricey but i've seen it go for a lot more too it's a unique album it's definitely not going to be everybody's cup of tea especially if you're a fan of bride from like the show no mercy era uh, or snakes in the playground it's very different but it is a cool album on a number of fronts musically kind of challenging and lyrically has some interesting stuff going for it too so this one i paid a decent price for but it was still probably a little bit more than i wanted to and then it was like shortly later i saw one pop up on ebay for 25 which was less than what i paid so i was like hmm um, but anyway, look around Discogs, eBay, you may see it pop up. I wonder if this will have the same fate as Blood Goods All Stand Together and that this will get a at least a limited, probably very limited, release on vinyl and maybe a remaster on CD at some point. It's just kind of unique and really hard to find. Very similar also to like Res Band's Hostage where you just couldn't find that on CD anywhere. I don't think it was originally released on CD, or if it was, it was a very limited Sparrow or Gurr Records release until Gerder Records remastered it and put it out, so now you can find that. But this probably has that same fate. If it got remastered and re-released, um, suddenly the rarity of this edition would, would go away. All right, Bride's classic album, Snakes in the Playground. This is a special re-release from uh, Limited Run Vinyl Garter Records. It is a purple edition that cost a little bit more than the other editions they were releasing at the time. This came out when? This was 2021. Originally a 1992 album, of course. It's a purple one. Maybe a little hard to tell, but it's a real dark purple. I, I really do like it. It doesn't match as well, of course, with the album art as some of the other colored releases, which I'll show you in a minute. You know, this has more of the, the browns and reds and stuff in it like that. Um, but this has a, a real kind of muted, deep, dark purple to it, which I do like. Compare that to this regular edition they put out, remastered edition, in the red smoky vinyl. I really like this one a lot, too. Partly because it looks good and partly because it just matches, you know, the colors in the, the album art better. And I'm a little bit of a stickler for that. I like when things match a bit. But it's just a beautiful color and it's remastered really well. It sounds great. This is just such a great album. It's a lot like what I talked about recently in my video about Deliverance's Weapons of Our Warfare. That was the album that really defined Deliverance, especially early on, an album they chased their entire career, so to speak, in that it was, you never quite get out from under the shadow of the popularity of an album like that. It's kind of just a classic. Snakes is kind of that same thing for Bride. It's this classic album that they've always had hanging over their head in some ways, even though, much like Deliverance, they've gone on and done great, great stuff in so many albums since then. But this is a classic. You should have this in your collection, whether you're a Christian or not. It is just a great album of great music and uh, well worth it. So great album, classic stuff. This version of Bride just rocked as a whole. All right, next up, as far as unique albums go, I've got this one by artist Jeff Johnson. This is a classic of what I would call progressive art rock 
maybe even kind of psychedelic rock a little bit. This is an early one from Jeff Johnson, who has been a favorite artist of mine since I got into Christian music back in the 80s. And it's really, really cool. It's dated, again, in that it is a little more psychedelic kind of sounding. A lot of keyboards. Jeff Johnson's a, primarily a keyboardist and vocalist. And it's just very cool. I love the album art on this. This was very hard to find for a long time. I couldn't find a CD or vinyl of this. Just seemed to be tough to locate. And when I did track one down, they were usually very expensive. Well, then finally one popped up on eBay one day and I grabbed it. It was actually very, very reasonable. Uh, I've seen a few since, not a ton, but I have seen a few more pop up since then. Great album. I also was able to get a hold of the vinyl, which also had been very difficult to find for a long time. And that's what's kind of unique about it, both musically and, again, a little bit more rare to find. It's unlikely, I guess, that Jeff Johnson will remaster any of these. I don't know. I would love it if he did, especially his art rock albums. He went through a lot of different, uh, or has gone through a lot of different styles and phases and types of music from you know a little more poppy rock kind of music to more art rock music progressive music into jazz celtic and back around to more kind of worshipful style music which is more of what he's doing today although he's also been doing a bunch with phil keggy and so we've got a lot more of this kind of uh, acoustic ethereal music going on but he's just really rich in his musical palette and really sounds so good this one's just a favorite because again it's the beginning really of his art rock phase and i loved this album which led into like shadow play icons fallen splendor a, a host of really great albums this was really kind of the beginning of it although i guess you could make a case that his first album not his first album but uh, earlier album, I think before, right before this one, Face of the Deep, was the beginning of his art rock phase. But this one really kind of solidified it for me. It's a cool album, and I love, love that album artwork. It's by um, David and Kathy Hastings, who did a lot of Johnson's album cover artwork over the years, especially early on. Great album. Check it out. If you're into kind of progressive rock, psychedelic rock, this is worth checking out. It's really cool stuff, if you can find it. Oh gosh, I got way too many good albums to go through yet. I'm going to have to do this in several videos, plus I got a bunch more on the shelf. I could probably do four or five videos on what I would call unique albums of Christian music. But let's whip through a few more of these here. Here is Lecrae. All things, what is this? All things work together. Rap, hip-hop, really, really cool album he's got a number of great albums regardless of what you may think of lecrae i know he's a little outspoken on a bunch of different topics and areas but this is a really cool album one of his best i think this one anomaly and probably gravity are my favorites of his uh, and this one is a re-release this had been on vinyl at least once before anyway and it was a black and totally black and white cover art and then the, that sold out, and I couldn't get that. I had it on CD, but I wasn't able to get the vinyl. Well, then, not too long ago, maybe a year or less ago, maybe six months ago even, re-released this, uh, I think it's a 10th anniversary edition, back on vinyl again, and did the, the red and black combo cover art on here. If you like rap or hip-hop in particular at all, this is just a cool album. It's got a nice kind of brown and red smoke looking vinyl to it there's two disc editions it's not a gatefold just a two disc edition but it's just a very good album rich spiritual themes and it's got a little heavier hip-hop sound to it that i like coming from him a couple of his are a little lighter sometimes this one's got a little heavier vibe to it and uh, i really really enjoy this album worth checking out Lost Dogs. Oh, this is their second album, and it is a classic. They released this back in... I don't know if the year is on here. They don't put the original year a lot of times on here. I want to say this was 90s, too, like 92 or something. But they re-released this on vinyl. Uh, I don't think the original was on vinyl. And I don't know if they had a vinyl release previous to these. Probably not. This was 2019, 
Low Fidelity Records, which puts out some great editions. They did a Mark Hurd edition as well. They released Little Red Riding Hood here, their second album, on a bunch of different vinyl editions. And I got this particular colored edition, this red, black, white splatter edition, which is really cool. But this album is, you know, a mix of styles because it's the guys from Daniel Amos and the choir and Adam again, and other, you know, a bunch of bands that formed, got together, select guys from those bands, got together and formed their own band, the Lost Dogs. And that's why they call it the Lost Dogs because they were lost from their original bands. Uh, but they did this on the side, but in some ways this became, I think, more popular than some of their original bands or their main bands. It's a very cool album. Definitely probably their most popular. Their first one was Scenic Routes, which I loved a lot. This one came along. I loved it even more. And really, those have been their, without a doubt, their best two albums, although they've got a lot of good ones too. This is a great addition. I think there's a, still a few other versions of colored vinyl available on their Bandcamp site, so it's worth checking out. It is just a great album of rock, acoustic rock, folk styles. Um, there's even some blues sometimes, a little gospely tinge stuff maybe here and there. Uh, but it's just a great style. If you like their original bands like Daniel Amos, The Choir, Adam Again, some of those, it's it's got a good mix of all theirs. They each kind of bring that tone to the band. And, of course, Terry Scott Taylor from Daniel Amos is really the primary songwriter on a number of these, although it is a mix of them all. It just is it's a great, great album. It's really cool. A little more folk, a little more country vibe sometimes, but also a lot of rock in there too, and acoustic acoustic rock. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Check them out. If you haven't heard of Lost Dogs, I think they're done now. They've done about 10 albums. The band has changed at least one member over the time. Um, uh, Gene Eugene had passed away, so they replaced him. And it still, it still had a good vibe to it. But those original first two albums are just the best from them. And this is unique, again, in that I don't know how many of their albums are going to get a vinyl release. I would love it if Scenic Routes came out yet on vinyl release. I don't know if it ever has been. I don't think so. I know originally it wasn't. And I don't believe there's been a remastered version or a crowdfunded version previously. But that's the other one I'd love to see. So this one making... It to a, a really nice gatefold vinyl edition is worth picking up. It's unique. There may not ever be another Lost Dogs album released on vinyl. So it's unique and it's a good, nicely made edition. So fan of Lost Dogs, see if you can still get a copy of that while it's available. Next up, Striper, a classic album, Soldiers Under Command, their second album, really their first full-length one. Their first one was the Yellow and Black Attack, which was an EP. But this was really their first one, and one of the first ones to really capture a lot of attention. Next, you know, it was followed by To Hell with the Devil, which was, of course, the one that really took off. But this is great. I, I got this edition. Let me open it up. I got this particular edition at a local bookstore, and it's, it's a little chewed up on the cover. But it's this white vinyl edition, and I used to think, wow, that's... When I first got it, I thought, that's really pretty rare. Well, since then, I've seen lots of people have the white vinyl edition, and maybe it's actually the black vinyl edition, uh, which I assume there is one. That's more rare than the white vinyl, because I see the white vinyl everywhere. I've seen it in bookstores. I've seen a lot of people online sharing about their vinyl collections, their striper collections, and almost everybody has the white vinyl edition. So I don't know how rare that necessarily is but i used to think it was pretty pretty rare when i first got it i like it though it's cool and it's of course a great classic album from striper they've had a bunch of great albums though in recent years their last four or five albums have been just spot on final battle their most recent one was great and they've got another one i believe in the works coming out in 2024 if i remember correctly so just keep a watch on striper they have got some great music putting out some of the best albums of their discography of their career in recent years or recent decade or so so it's great stuff keep an eye on striper they are not gone they are not dead yet so to speak sticking to the striper theme but switching bands 
We have Guardian with their version of the Yellow and Black Attack album called The Yellow and Black Attack is Back. And this was Guardian's re-recording of Striper's EP album. This was from 1998. This was also another one of those Millennium 8 M8 distribution albums. I don't know if this was the only release or if this was a re-release of that Honestly, not sure. I'd have to look up on Discogs. But it's got six tracks, and it's got the fun picture on the back of the Guardian guys' faces on the Striper Band photo, I believe. The concept, like I said, was was basically just re-recording Striper's Yellow and Black Attack EP uh, in Guardian style. Uh, and some of them are real faithful, and some of them vary a little bit, but it is kind of an interesting experiment, and I like... Guardian. I like a lot of their stuff. So this was kind of a fun album to find. And I think it's a little tougher to track down from what I've seen. There's a little insert. Compared to some of the other Guardian material, especially the later stuff, you can find Swing Swang Swung and a lot of their other stuff that was not quite as popular as some of the earlier Guardian albums. You can find that, but this is one that's a little tougher to track down. I found it on eBay popped up on a really good price, so I grabbed it, and I'm so glad I did. Neat album, cool experiment, an interesting way for a band to play tribute to Striper. So, cool stuff. Here's another unique album by former DC talk band mate Kevin Max, K-Max. It's one of his solo albums called The Blood, kind of a more gospel-oriented, played homage to some gospel hymns or... Um, you know, songs and tunes by different gospel artists. And it's really cool. It's a good, good album. This is one, again, I found on eBay really cheap. It looks like, if that is an accurate, it looks like it was autographed by Kevin Max himself. Didn't know that when I picked it up, but when I got it out of the mailbox there, I saw that it was actually signed. It looks to be authentic from what I've seen online. To me, it's one of his better ones, one of those that kind of is more consistent. I really like it. Uh, the Cross... One of the tracks here that features all the DC Talk guys on it. That was written by Prince originally. Third track, Run On For A Long Time, which is written by the Blind Boys of Alabama. Fourth track, Trouble of the World by Mahalia Jackson. Fifth track, I Know His Blood Can Make Me Whole by Blind Willie Johnson. He collaborates with Amy Grant and Vince Gill on the sixth track here. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. Just a lot of neat, neat stuff. Song by Andre Crouch. Joanne Cash. Uh, collaborates with him here on One Way, One Blood, the 10th track. So it's it's a neat, neat album. It's got some good stuff. And again, finding it autographed was just an added bonus. So one of those albums of his that I really, really enjoy and will listen to more often than some of his others. Some of his stuff is a little eclectic. you got to be in the mood for it. This one fits my mood a little more often than some of his others, but I do love his work. Keeping up with the DC Talk-related theme and with the theme of autographed albums, we have former DC Talker Toby Mac with his solo album Life After Death from 2022. I think this is still his latest solo album, although I know there's another one out or about to come out. But you may very well have this album and have it autographed too. They offered this when the album first came out on Facebook for five bucks plus shipping, which cost quite a bit more. But you could get it autographed by Toby Mac. And so that's how I got this. So it's kind of neat. Take advantage of that. I think they sold out relatively quickly, but I'm pretty sure they had a decent amount of them. It was a way to kind of bump sales, promote things, get it going. Um, but it's a good album. It really is. It's all dealing with the issues of, like it says, life after death when Toby Mac's son uh, passed away rather unexpectedly, but I think was ultimately found out to be from a drug overdose of some kind. He's been dealing with that, obviously, ever since. And this album was one of the ways in which he really worked through some spiritual issues through his songwriting and through his music. So it's really good. Very, very good album. I think there's some stuff on his... Again, I think he's got a new album coming out, and I think there's some stuff on that that also kind of continues as he deals with this. This is a tough issue. I can't imagine losing uh, a young son. Uh, and having to move forward in life. It just it, it breaks my heart and soul. And this is a powerful way to listen to how he deals with this uh, subject matter and, and spiritually, to his credit, continues to uphold God and Christ in his life. 
So great album, but unique again when you when you find opportunities like this to get something autographed, it's kind of cool. I don't travel to do any concerts anymore, so I don't have a lot of opportunities to take my merch, take it to some concert and get it signed. So these are neat ways to at least be able to to do that and come away with autographed copies. On that same front, here is a CD by the group Shine. This is from 1990-something, I believe. This is more of a pop dance group that was around then in the 90s. I'm not sure if they had more than one album. They may have had a couple. I like this group back in the 90s. All-girl band that's really cool. I first found out about them from a compilation CD. This is on Reunion Records, and I think they had a compilation CD of a bunch of different dance bands from the 90s, and I had that. Shine had at least one or two songs on there, and I really liked that. I listened, listened to their to those tracks quite a bit. Then I happened to track down this CD at a half price of books several years ago and found this copy again totally autographed by all four of the girls so i thought that's really really neat to pick up it was only a buck or two because it was in the clearance but it's a really good album some stuff i like on it better than others but there are some really great tracks on this band i thought they had a lot of good energy some neat spiritual uh, lyrics and just kind of a fun fun listen to so if i'm in the mood for some bouncy pop dance music this is a good one to turn to good stuff and last but not least for today, so I don't make this video too long, is The Hum of the Diesels by Larry Norman. Of course, he's got so many different albums out. This is a CD release from several years ago. I believe this was from a set of albums that they kind of just repackaged from the Salvation Army Band sessions, I think is what they were called. And I don't know all the history and details of that, but Norman had this one, which is The Hum of the Diesels. Sierra Romeo and The Salt of the Sea, I believe, were three Digipack albums that came out around the same time, were for sale on his website. I got Sierra Romeo and Salt of the Sea pretty quickly, but I had not gotten Hum of the Diesels in time, and it sold out. So I thought, well, that's that. Eventually, I found a copy available at a yeah, not great price, but a decent price. I went and picked it up because I wanted to get this one. This was really the, the most favorite of the three. I should have picked it up first, but found it. So I went ahead and, and picked it up from somebody, I think, on Discogs. It was a little more than I wanted to spend, but I went ahead and did it. And then shortly after, of course, this album comes back on the Larry Norman website for like eleven ninety nine. I think it's long gone again now, but uh, I probably should have just just waited. But it's a good now album. It's got stuff like Knocking on Heaven's Door, I Am a Pilgrim, Jesus Freak, All Fall Down, Everything is Broken, uh, People Get Ready. Number number of tracks that I just really, really like on this album. Um, I like that photo of him on the cover too. So it's a cool one. Glad I have it. Okay, we're going to stop there today. I could go on and on. I've got a lot of stuff in my collection that I would consider kind of unique. And these are just a few of them, so a little bit of sampling. So maybe I'll do some more videos in the future about these unique albums. Which of these do you have? Which do you like? Which of these maybe have you heard for the first time through this video? Let me know what you're curious about, what you like, styles of music, and albums that you have from Christian rock or Christian music history that you think are pretty unique in terms of collectability, in terms of music, in terms of the band's discography. Would love to hear your comments on that. Feel free to share below in the comments section. Anyway, hope you're having a great day. Go out and listen to some great Christian rock or Christian music and enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. Bye-bye.